Hey everyone, this is Jorge Yao back again with another video for my defensive wins and losses series. Now, today I kind of wanted to discuss something about greed or focus more on greed. Now, um, when I'm rating, and I'm definitely subject to this mistake too, a lot of times, you know, you get like 47, 48%, or even a little bit less, or even a little bit more. And you're like, oh, let me go in for the two star being a little bit greedy because you want the extra cups, right? Especially at this level, those cups make a huge difference. Now, for, <laughs> for as a fair warning, you definitely don't want to fall into that trap being greedy. Now, I wanted to showcase a defensive win that I had last night. So last night, I actually cut my session short because I was so tired. I only played two hours out of the full six-hour session because I really needed to catch up on sleep after the Apocalypse Yao tournament that was this past weekend. Um, so I decided to go on defense and I actually won. And the reason why I won was directly because of greed. Now, I don't really blame this guy for being greedy, but let me show you the replay. So as you can see, I played a session early today and I lost one star, negative seven, which is not too bad at this level. Negative seven, one star, I'll take that, especially against air. Uh, the base that I have currently is not designed really for air. So one star, negative seven, not too bad. But let me show you the attack that I won, or the defense that I won last night. I'm going to replay it. It's, a, it's from a guy, so I'm going to pause it real quick. So this base, as I showed you before, I should really change up because, you know, players really know how to de defeat it nowadays. It's really not the best base to use, so I don't recommend you guys using it. Uh, it's a Titan 3, so I, I think I was worth 40, or no, 57 cups or 58 cups to this guy. So, you know, that kind of explains why he went a little bit greedy, but I'll show you in a second um, what happens. So let's go. So he goes with Lava Loonian attack, so, and this base is not really designed for a Lava Loonian attack. Um, so he spreads his you know, loons pretty well, pretty standard, he goes bottom right, uh, which is pretty standard. Lava's in, goes, uh, goes for the bottom and the right air defense with loons spread out and the minions behind, he rages. That second rage spell wasn't too great of a rage spell, but at least the loons kind of funneled in. So this is what I was afraid of right here. So right here, this is exactly what I didn't want, and that's what this base is kind of designed for, is for the loons to actually spread out. So if you see here, that's what I wanted your loons to do, is go around the core. So a few loons did that, but these loons, people have figured out how to, def uh, to basically destroy this base and get to the core. So as you can see, these loons got to the core, and then I, at this point I was really worried, because it's already at 29%, he has one rage spell uh, left and, an all and a free spell on top of that. So I'm, at this point I'm like, oh crap. This is probably going to be a two star. He's going to rage those up right at the core and he's going to freeze um, the Teslas and the probably the Expo and the uh, multi-target Inferno. I think the multi-target Inferno is still alive, but we'll see. So he goes in, he raises as normal, um, uses that last free spell, probably could have used that free spell a little bit. He used it a little bit too late as you can see. And he didn't, he didn't really use it on the right, um, te on, excuse me, not Tesla. He used it on the wrong uh, Inferno Tower. He probably should have used it on the multi-target, and he probably used, should have used it a lot sooner than that, because by this time, all the loons are, his loons are already dead, so there was really no point in using that freeze spell. So that was kind of his first mistake. And at this point, I was like, okay, maybe I do have a chance of winning. Maybe I do have a chance of winning. So there you go. He has, you know, basically 40%. He has some minions. He has some... Uh, lava pops and you know, there's easily some outside buildings that he can pick off with his archers which he kind of does But look instead when he when instead of going for the easy easy one star win that he could with his heroes uh, As soon as he dropped those wall breakers to break through that first layer of wall I knew he was going greedy. I knew he wanted to go for the core But if you look I still have two inferno towers uh, all four teslas and two expos plus my king and my queen so at this point, I knew that you know he, he probably wouldn't get the two star, but he may still end up with the one star. But let's go ahead. So this is what I consider greed. So he could easily get the one star, right? And I think he was thinking, okay, maybe I can pick off the outside building still with the uh, with his extra four archers that he still has and still get the one star. Um, so he goes in. He doesn't have a poison spell for those skeleton traps, and then the queens occupied. Um, he breaks through that wall. And there you go, the skeleton traps are still there. She already popped uh, the ability on the queen, so queen's dead. And there you go, the extra archers are there. They're trying to pick off. So that one lava pup took out another percentage, so that's 47% right there. And then those two archers probably could get another 2% off of those buildings at 49%. 
and maybe one archer. I think he might be able to pick off one more building. I'm not quite sure. He may be able to take out that uh, one army camp. Not too sure if that uh, archer tower is in range of that camp for him to take it out, but he may be able to do that. Um, either that or he may be able to take out that spell factory. But the, as you can see, those skeleton traps actually came in clutch because they actually took out both of those archers to prevent the 50% basically, or the extra 2% that those archers would have gotten. So there you go, like that's the definition of greed. Now, in my perspective, you know, he, I was worth, so I gained 20, I gained two cups off of this. So obviously I was worth 57, I believe, uh, cups to him. So, you know, if I was in his position, I probably would have gone, tried to go for the two star two and go a little bit riskier and be greedy about it. Because if you get the two star, you know, you get what, 38 cups or 37 or 36, I forget how many it was. But um, he could have easily gone for the one star and taken 18 cups or 17 cups, but you know, if you're only if you only have two cups that you're gonna lose if you lose the raid, then I don't know. It's like kind of a risk return kind of thing. So in my opinion, um, you know, it could have gone both ways. But as a high level attacker, if this were in my position and I'm attacking someone else, I definitely, definitely guarantee it would have gone just for the one star because you know any cups is better than losing cups. So this is the definition of greed and something that you guys should definitely avoid when you're uh, doing your raids and so on and so forth. So again, this is uh, you know an example of that and that pretty much concludes it for this video. I just wanted to showcase you know and kind of warn you guys definitely definitely do not fall into the trap of being greedy with these with cups especially because you know a negative 38 especially at this high level um, you know, because at this high level, you're attacking bases that are worth like four cups, three cups, and so on and so forth. So if you lose, you lose negative 30 something plus. So you never want to go greedy because the ROI, the return on investment is just not there, right? If you lose, if for those extra few cups, if you win, you get a few cups. If you lose, you basically set yourself back a couple of days worth of rating. Um, so, and you never want to fall into that trap. And here again, I'm just going to look and check the leaderboards right now. So yeah, squad, my second account, ironically, is so much higher than my first account. I think I might switch to Lava Lunium, but I think I'm gonna stick to my guns and uh, try to get this account to uh, Legends using Dragons. Now, with the new update that's coming out soon with level seven spells and re rework of other spells, um, I think that Drags might make a return because I think two level seven lightning spells plus an earthquake spell could take out one air defense. That leaves me with uh, let's see three extra spell spaces so I could use two rage and one freeze on top of that So right now my main composition is basically three lightning spells and two rage So I could replace one of the lightning spells with maybe a freeze spell and then instead of using poison uh, I use earthquake, but I'm kind of weary of, the, of that because the poison spell got reworked too uh, per the sneak peek that supercell gave out uh, I think today or yesterday where the uh, the longer the troops are in the poison range or in the poison ring, the more damage it does. So it's kind of like a mini Inferno tower, basically. So I don't know how that plays out in terms of my strategy. I'll have to play around with it when the update actually comes out. But again, so the moral of the story is don't be greedy. You know, go for the easy win if you can. Unless, you know, for me, secure the 50% before going for the two star. Um, and this really only applies for, you know, Lava Lunian attackers, drag attackers, because you drop your king and your queen quite late in the attack. Basically, those are the last things that you drop. Whereas, if you go ground, you pretty much drop your king and your queen with your ground troops. So that you can't really control the, uh, the greed, but in air attacks especially, don't be greedy and just take the positive cups. You know, the extra cups are not worth it. Um, and there you go, and uh, thanks again for tuning in. This is this concludes my second video in the series defensive wins and losses and uh, if you liked the video again don't forget to comment like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.